We're going to show you the correct way of using HTTP clients and GET requests in an ASP.NET Core app. One way we can do it is to make a new instance of the HTTP client every time we make a request. So we can create a new instance of the HTTP client. We can set a base address for it. So we're going to be using a dummy JSON website. So we're going to be calling dummyjson.com. So we'll set that as the base address. And then we can get our response by calling await HTTP client get async and there's an endpoint called slash products. So we can call that. And finally, we can return the string as the response. So we call response.content.read as string async. The problem that we've got with this method is that we're not meant to have too many HTTP client instances open at the same time. This is because it uses its own connection pool, which involves using an available TCP port on the server. When a HTTP client instance is disposed, it disposes the connection pool, but doesn't release the TCP port immediately. As a result, too many of these requests in a short period of time will mean that there will not be enough available ports to make a connection, and you'll start to have socket exceptions when making API requests. In addition, if you wish to create another instance of HTTP client, you also have to re-establish the connection, causing unnecessary overhead. This is not a recommended way of doing it. A better way of doing it is to create the HTTP client instance as a singleton, so we only have one instance of it. Let's see how we can do that. We can open up program.cs and we can call builder.services.addSingleton to add the singleton. To do this, we pass in an instance of the service provider as the parameter, and then we just create a new instance of the HTTP client. So this has now set up the HTTP client instance as a singleton. We go into our HTTP client now. This is registered as a scope service, so we can inject the HTTP client into it. So we're going to create a constructor, we'll call it HTTP service. We're going to inject the HTTP client instance. And we we'll set it as a private read-only field as part of the service. We we'll set that as underscore. And then we'll set the private read-only instance to the parameter. From here, we can't set the base address unless we're using the same one for each one. So we're going to have to take that out. We're going to call underscore HTTP client. We we'll need to put in the full URL as a result of not having the base address. So we call HTTPS colon slash slash dummyjson.com. This is a much better way of doing it, but we're still going to have problems with a HTTP client instance. The reason being is that we're going to have DNS issues because it's not going to update the DNS unless we restart the application. There is a way around this. So what we can do is we can create a new sockets handler where we create the HTTP client. And within that, we can set a pulled connection time. And we're going to set that to five minutes. So from here, it's going to update the DNS every five minutes. This is a much better way, but there is also another way you can do it. Another way is to use IHTTP client factory, which can be used as part of dependency injection. Let's take a look and see how we can use that. Go into our program.cs. We're going to remove the singleton instance and we're going to replace it with builder.services add HTTP client. So for this, we can add a name. So when we configure a HTTP client, if we're calling to a particular endpoint, we can go ahead and configure it. So first of all, we're going to give it a name and we'll call it dummy JSON. And then as part of the next parameter, it's an action as part of the HTTP client. So we pass in that instance as part of the delegate. Then we go in there, we're going to set the base address. And the base address is going to be HTTPS dummy JSON. Com. So if we go into the HTTP service now, we can replace the HTTP client that we're passing in with I HTTP client factory. We'll also update the name for it. We're also going to update the parameter that we're passing in. From here, we can use the I HTTP client factory to create a new HTTP client. So we call the HTTP client factory, create client, and we pass in the name of dummy JSON. 
So that is the same name that we've passed in here that we've configured in program.cs. From there, we just update the HTTP client instance. We only have to call the relative URL. We don't have to call the full URL. And that's been done for us. I HTTP client factory is good at the management of HTTP client instances, particularly managing the number of HTTP client instances, which are reusable across multiple requests. It's also good at managing the connection pools, meaning it reuses connections and manages the lifetime of a HTTP client instance. These benefits ensure that you don't have any connection pool issues as a result of too many TCP ports being open on the server. It also avoids common DNS problems that can occur. Now that we've established the correct way of using HTTP client, we're going to send an API request and as part of the response, we're going to bind it to an object. For this, we're going to use dummy JSON, which we've already used so far. This is a response we get when we call dummyjson.com slash products. And we're going to take the ID, title, description, and price and add it as properties to a class. We'll create a new class which we'll call product model. And we're going to add those properties to it. So we start off with the ID. And we're going to do the same for the title. Do the same for the description. And finally for the price. We'll also create one other model and this will list all our products within it. So we're going to call it product response model. And this will simply have a list of all our product models, which we'll call products. In HTTP service, we're going to change the return type for the read async. We're going to change it to the product response model that we just created. We also need to do the same in the IHTTP service to so the team match. So there's a few ways we can do this. So we're going to replace get async and we're going to call get from JSON async. Now for this, we can pass in the generic type as what we expect from the JSON. So it's going to be the product response model. And we call our endpoint, which is slash products. And we just need to return it. This is good, but if there's an error with our HTTP response, it throws an exception. We can demonstrate it by changing the endpoint and trying to run it. So in this instance, it's thrown a HTTP request exception. We can add a try catch block around this to catch that exception. So we put a try around the endpoint. We catch the HTTP request exception, and we can do whatever we like with that exception. So we could return null. Another good thing about this is that the exception does have some useful information, such as the status code. So if the status code is 404, we can do something with that. Or if it's 500, we can do something else. One other way is to bind it after we've got the response. So we go back and we're going to set the response and we call await HTTP client get async and slash products. Now with this, it returns a HTTP response message. So with that, we can see if it's a successful status code. And if it's not, we can return null at this stage. Otherwise, what we can do is we can get the response from the content. So we call response.content. And within that, there's a read from JSON async. And we can pass in what we're expecting from the JSON, what type. So it'd be a product response model type and we can return that. When we run the endpoint, we're now getting our products as part of our model. Get is just one of the HTTP methods that you can use. Watch this video next, where we'll show you some of the other ones. And if you want to download any of our code examples, you can go to roundthecode.com examples. The website also includes tutorials, coding challenges, and courses to help improve your C-sharp technical skills.